Lots of people don't even know they've got high blood pressure. That's because it rarely has any symptoms. In the UK, about 12 million adults have high blood pressure, but only half of them are actually diagnosed. The rest of them are just kind of blissfully unaware there's anything wrong. And in fact, those people who are diagnosed and treated, only about 50 to 80% of them actually take their medication as prescribed, which is kind of foolish when you think that if you have a well-controlled blood pressure, then you actually reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke down to someone who doesn't have any high blood pressure at all. So this video could save your life. Come with me on a dog walk and I'll tell you all about it. Come on, girls. So what is high blood pressure? We doctors call it hypertension, so you may have heard that word used, and it's measured with two numbers. The top number, which we call the systolic number, and the bottom number, which we call the diastolic number. And the systolic number, the top one, this is the force it takes for the heart to pump blood around the body. So the heart squeezing, and that's the top number. And the diastolic number is when the heart's relaxing. And the blood vessels do need pressure to take the blood around. It's the arteries that carry the oxygenated blood from the heart around the body and normally they're able to stretch out wide and relax in order to allow this blood to flow through. When you have high blood pressure, these uh, blood vessels become stiff and narrow and that increases the risk of them being clogged up with fatty deposits and that's what leads to the risk of heart attack and stroke. But not only heart attack and stroke, it also leads to an increased risk of vascular dementia, heart failure, kidney failure and visual problems. What causes high blood pressure? Well, sometimes there isn't an underlying cause. Sometimes it runs in families. Most of the time, it's just because you're getting older and also diet and lifestyle factors. You are at an increased risk of high blood pressure if you come from a deprived background or if you come from a black African or Caribbean descent. In about one in 20 cases, it's actually due to an underlying health condition. And we often suspect this when it's someone very young, healthy, who's got very high blood pressure. So what should your blood pressure be? Well, a healthy blood pressure is considered to be around about 120 over 80. And we measure this by a unit called millimeters of mercury. And we call high blood pressure, anything done in clinic above 140 over 90. If you're doing it at home, then we consider high blood pressure anything above 135 over 85. When you get older, so when you're over 80, we give you a little bit more leeway. So high blood pressure is anything over 150 over 90 done in clinic. The reason there is that difference is because a lot of people suffer with what's called white coat hypertension. And this means when you come down to see the GP, we're so scary that we make your high blood pressure become a bit higher. So often it's better to have this done at home. It gives us a better true representation of what your blood pressure is doing. So how often should you have your blood pressure checked? Well, if you're a healthy adult over 40, you should be having it checked at least every five years. If you have got higher risk factors for high blood pressure, then you should be having it done really about once a year. And it's really worthwhile knowing that for every 10 millimeters of mercury drop in that systolic, that top number, that reduces your risk of cardiovascular events like heart attack and stroke by 20%. So it's really worthwhile getting on top of your blood pressure. Oh, and do keep watching because at the end, I'm gonna show you how to measure your blood pressure at home properly. So keep watching. So as I've said, most of the time, you don't get any symptoms with high blood pressure. But if your blood pressure goes very high, so we're thinking about numbers like 180 over 120, you can get symptoms. That can include things like chest pain, nosebleeds, confusion, shortness of breath, and visual problems. If you're worried about that, then you need to get seen straight away. So management of high blood pressure. First things first, we need to look at lifestyle measures. Now, everyone probably knows that you shouldn't have too much salt and that's not good for your blood pressure. But what I think is really surprising, because loads of patients say to me, well, I don't add extra salt into my food. But actually, the salt you get in your food, only about 10 to 15% of it is added at the table. So the rest of it is in like your soups, your stocks, um, sauces, soy sauce, ketchup, you know, that's all got a lot of salt in. Even bread, which as a population we eat a lot of, and one slice of bread can even have as much salt in as a packet of crisps. So we need to think a lot about how much salt we're having in our diet and try and reduce it. Other things we need to be doing with our lifestyle is reducing our alcohol. That's not good for your blood pressure. Smoking, I know you know it, but this is the time to stop. It is really bad for your blood pressure. So do try and stop. Increasing your exercise and activity levels. Again, I know it's not easy, but do try and focus on this. This is for you, this is for your health. It's really important. Cut down on your caffeine, especially after lunch. So just stop any caffeine after lunch, move to decaf. And if you are carrying extra weight, then do try and lose that weight. All those things can really help control your blood pressure. Medications. Some people will choose not to start on any medications. They want to have a real good go at making those lifestyle changes. Maybe that's you. 
but a lot of people will end up on medication. And I think don't be disappointed if you end up on more than one type of medication, because a lot of studies showing that's really beneficial for a lot of people. But still do make those lifestyle changes as well as being on the medication. So often we use things like Ramipril, Losartan, Amlodipine, and each medication has its own side effects. Usually they are pretty well tolerated, but of course discuss this with your clinician before starting on these medications. If you're not sure what's right for you, I've included in the description a link to a patient decision making tool which helps look at the pros and cons and the risk factors you've got. So that can be helpful. And I think it's really important to remember that you won't feel any different on these medications. So I think a lot of people think, I don't think they're working, I feel just the same. But remember that high blood pressure doesn't have any symptoms, so you won't feel any different. But that does not mean it's not working. So behind the scenes, it's working really hard at reducing your risk factor for those heart attacks and strokes and other problems that come along with high blood pressure. So my key take home messages are that, this, that high blood pressure is known as the silent killer and it's the biggest cause of death globally. And you won't feel any different once you lower your high blood pressure, but you will reduce your risk of things like heart attack and stroke. Do always try really hard with those lifestyle changes. I know it's not always easy, but it's really important. And do keep watching because I'm gonna show you how to properly measure your blood pressure at home. The reason this is important, it may be that your nurse or your doctor has asked you to do some measurements at home. Usually we say morning and evening for several consecutive days, maybe four days, seven days, sometimes even longer. I'll include a link to a blood pressure diary where you can write these down. And from that, we're able to work out what your average blood pressure is. And it's often lower at home than it is when you come to the clinic we've talked about white coat hypertension, so it avoids that and it gives us a really clear picture of what your blood pressure really is accurately. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, obviously you've got to buy a blood pressure machine if you can afford it. And um, there can be as cheap as about 15 pounds, you can get them from your high street pharmacy or online. So follow the instructions as per your specific um, blood pressure machine. But here are some good guidelines for how you should do it. First things first, you need to make sure you are nice and rested and calm. So before you take your blood pressure, avoid any caffeine, eating for an hour beforehand, exercising. And if you need to go to the toilet, make sure you do that before you take your blood pressure because that those things can all raise your blood pressure artificially. In fact, what's ideal is before you take your blood pressure, if you can sit down and rest in a chair for about five minutes first. Keep your feet flat on the floor and ideally your arms kind of rested. Um, and that's nice and important for the few minutes, five minutes or so before you take your blood pressure. When you first start taking your blood pressure, try both arms and then see which one's higher. And from then moving forward, continue to use the arm that was higher and always use that arm. Okay, so how do you actually take the measurement? Well, you put the blood pressure cuff on your arm, just a bit higher than your elbow. And ideally you want your arm about in line with your heart. So you wanna rest it on a table, not too low and you want to take um, probably two or three measurements. So usually you just have to press start once you've got the cuff on correctly and it will go really tight and sometimes it can be really uncomfortably tight, but don't worry too much about that. Uh, it will go down again, your arm won't fall off and it can be noisy, it can do beeping, there's different ones uh, do different things. And then when it finishes, it will leave the top number and the bottom number. So you might wanna write that down or you can sometimes keep it in the memory of the blood pressure machine. So you want to do that about two or three times, use, waiting about one or two minutes between each one. And then you can keep a good average from there. Don't worry if there's little small changes because what we would like to do is just see how it averages out. Sometimes you can get an unexpectedly high reading. If it's just a one-off, don't worry about that. Again, as I said, there are quite a lot of things that can cause your blood pressure reading to be higher. So if you're feeling really stressed, for example, that can certainly do it. So again, it's just what we're looking at is the average. But obviously, if you have got any concerns, then do get in contact with your healthcare provider to discuss further. Hope that helps. I hope you found that useful. Do look at my other videos on my YouTube channel, like and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find lots of helpful information. Take care.